Hey, so I noticed there was some interest in learning how to modify this game, so I thought it was a good time to put together a series on everything I know up to this point so that you all can start to learn how to modify this game too. And we're going to do something fun to start it off, so we're going to change this inner field in order to give you a brand new waifu playmat. And to do that, we're going to need three programs total. The first one is this program called Tile Molster, which you can see here in the background. We're also going to need a program called Advanced Palette Editor, and these two you can get from rompacking.net under the Utilities tab, which is a pretty safe place to get it. And the last thing we need is an image processing program like Photoshop or GIMP. This is a pretty old version of Photoshop, but the steps to do it in GIMP are the exact same, and that's free, so pretty much either one will work. And the first thing we need to do is locate what we're trying to modify in the game inside of the ROM. So we're going to go open it in our tile mall. And this is basically just a color representation of all the data, which lets you easily spot structures that are supposed to represent graphics. So normally you'd have to go through and scroll a bunch in order to find the fields. But since I've already found it, we're going to use the navigate tool. And we're in, in this offset box, I threw together a little sheet on everything you need in order to do this. And I have the location here, which you can just copy and paste into here. And that will take you directly to all the fields in the game. You can also modify the, you know, dual puzzle background and the survival mode and all that. But we're going to focus on the very first one here, which is the campaign dual background. So what we first need to do is arrange it into the viewer so that it looks the same way it does in the game. So go ahead and use this decrease width tool and that should arrange it to the perfect width. And now what we want to do is isolate it here in the viewer. So I'm going to take a step forward and then I'm going to decrease the height, which has it isolated in the viewer, which is exactly what we want. So now what we want to do is figure out the colors inside of the game that are used to color this field. So what we can do is we can go to import palette this file and that will bring up this offset box. And on my worksheet here, you can see I have the location, but in order to input it into this program, you need to convert it first to a decimal. And I use just an online website, but you can just go ahead and copy this and paste it into here. And this is going to be colored by 16 colors, so type in 16. So now you can see it's the exact way it should look inside the game. And if you look inside the tools, actually, you can see we've gone and taken this row of 16 colors and imported it into our viewer so that we know we have the correct, you know, palette. So now what you want to do is you want to go to edit copy to. This lets you export what's ever in the viewer as a PNG file, which will let you keep the original dimensions for when you modify it. So we're just going to call this field default and hit save. Now what you want to do is create a bookmark so that you can easily come back to this location. That's this tool right here, or this icon, and we're just going to call it field. Okay, so now in order to avoid any permission errors, just go ahead and close this for now. This uh, sub window, that is. So now what you want to do is go into Photoshop, and you want to go open that exported image. And perfect, you can see it's very tiny, and that's pretty much exactly what we want. And now is the fun part of getting to pick out a cool image background. And I've got mine picked out already. Let me just go ahead and open it in Photoshop. You know, just, you know, per personal preferential reasons, no big deal. And I'm just going to copy this and paste it into here. Uh, probably going to need to resize it. I'm sure there's a better way to do this, but. Uh, 
and uh, okay there we go now let's hit enter and I'm just gonna nudge it into place okay so that looks pretty good and now what we also want to do I think is add some cool field zones uh, this part's I guess optional but I'm just gonna select the correct thing and perfect so I've got the field zones selected and I'm just going to uh, make a new layer and I guess I'll just fill with I guess just white okay perfect so now we've got this all set up and in order to get it inside the game we do need to reduce it to 16 colors so now just go to image and we have this tool called index color this will make you flatten the layers and now we have a few options we can select we can only use these three as it will reduce the colors for us um, you know perceptual has some you know weird blue stuff going on uh, you can use either one so let's just go ahead and use selective this will be good enough and you do make sure you leave a layer for transparency and also leave it as 16 colors if or you know put it as 16 colors so now what you want to do is go back to that same menu and look at the color table this has the colors of the image all laid out perfectly for us. And what we can do here is instead of leaving this as transparent, let's go ahead and give it a pinkish tone like the, the other transparent layer was and just hit OK. Now we can save this as a palette file. And we'll just call this palette modified. And just hit OK. And the last thing you want to do here is save this as a new PNG. So we will call this field modified. Perfect. So now we can just minimize this and let's go ahead and go into our advanced palette editor and open our ROM. And go ahead and go back to the worksheet in order to grab that value. And we're going to look for the palette location inside the ROM. And go ahead and copy this. And do make sure you're on load from offset. Paste it in there and hit load. Now you can see this is actually the very same color palette that we had imported with the same decimal number. And now that we're here, we can actually use this import tool and you might not be able to see it so go ahead and select the correct uh, palette file type and open it inside of our change palette now you can actually see that we've got all the colors perfectly set up in here but the the thing we need to do is make sure that this transparent layer is in the first slot so whatever's here just go ahead and copy this and paste it over this now you can actually just type in this same code again so I'm sorry one F seven C and now you can see we left their transparent layer the same the same way it was so you're gonna need to do that now just hit replace and you can actually check to see if it went through by going back one and then going forward one and now you can see it's got all of our colors set up in the actual palette so now you can just go back here and open the rom again and since we set up a bookmark you can actually just hit fields it will navigate perfectly go ahead back into import this file and if you haven't done anything else since then you should have the same numbers pulled up which we're going to need the same numbers and hit OK. So now you can see this is our palette here in the viewer and eh, kind of looks cool. But what we can do here is go to edit and hit paste from. Now you can see we have our field modified PNG, which we can open in here. Hello. 
there we go so as you can see it has this little white outline here and we're going to need to click somewhere in the gray in order to place it so now that I've placed it, if you've done this correctly, it should look exactly the way you designed it. If not, you do, you probably messed up, uh, you know, moving the transparent layer over, or you didn't open it, or uh, you had it open whenever you, you know, did whatever. So if you did it correctly, it should look exactly this way. And all you need to do is hit save. Perfect. So now what we can do is go back to our emulator and just reset it. Hit continue. And when you go to free dual, bam, now you can see the field is actually the same way that we had set it up in Photoshop and in tile mole. And this is exactly the result we want. So now that we have this, you're going to notice that we have kind of, you know, a ugly background for this and we're going to want to modify that too. However, these background graphics are compressed and we won't be able to modify them the same way that we did the inner field. And the most we're going to be able to do right now is change all the colors in order to have it match the inner field. So you can actually go to tools here and if you look at palette, you can see that this is our modified palette here and we're actually trying to look for this row now. And basically, you can also see like uh, the Karibo right here is colored with this row and we're colored with this row. So basically, the way you'd go about finding these is you'd have to go slot by slot and type these one by one into this uh, load by searching function. But as you can see, even this uh, even our row, uh, this says 7C1F, but we have to type it in as 1F7C. So whenever you do a load by searching, if you're going to type these in, you have to go slot by slot. It has to be accurate. And you do have to flip the back two characters with the front two. So it's going to be 1F7C. You're going to look for this one. You know, you know that one's. And you're gonna, these are going to be slot specific. So you'd basically go like that through each slot and then hit search and that will let you know where the palette is but also on the worksheet I already have this pulled up which you can just copy so let's go ahead and load from offset and paste in our value and hit load so now you can see we've got that palette pulled up and we're gonna basically want to change each of these colors with whatever we want so you can see that like this gray here is aligned with this and you can see these yellows are to do with this and these you know browns have to do with the background and this is a little bit hard and you know kind of guess and checky so I also did create a little um, table for you to sort of reference off of but I also went ahead and created a sort of template in Photoshop which you can have each of these layers sort of isolated let you visually represent each of these zones or each of the specific slots that let you pick the colors and I've actually gone through and pre done all of this so that we can save a little time and I went ahead and just took a screenshot pasted it in the background and sort of just made color overlays for each of these zones until I got something I kind of liked. So now that we have these all picked out and this will probably take you some time to get look really, you know, get looking really good. Uh, we're going to want to go slot by slot and basically fill in that same thing. So as you can see on the worksheet, we have the, you know, transparent phases background. I've also got the layers name and you see, I left the first two as unmodified. So let's go ahead and go to our advanced palette editor. I'm just going to copy, oh, I'm sorry. I'm just going to go ahead and copy these right here. And I left these first two unmodified, but starting with this third slot, I have the phases text. Uh, this is the, you know, purple background here. And what you can do is just take a color dropper. So now you can see we've got this color pulled up 
and just go ahead and take this code right here and copy it. And there's actually this tool on the advanced palette editor called RGB GBA converter. So we have this RGB code. You can paste that into there and calculate. Then just take this and we're looking at the third slot. So just go ahead and paste it into the third slot. So now you can see we can fill each of these colors out just by looking at the color code, converting it into a RGB to GBA form, and then going one by one and inserting these colors here. So I'm going to go through and do this and sort of speed up through it. Okay, boom. So I've went through, I've gone color by color, row by row, and put in all the colors exactly how I want them. Now I just need to hit replace. And we're just going to go back and forward one to see if this went through, which it did. And now just to make sure it worked, we're just going to reboot our ROM and enter another duel. And as you can see perfectly exactly what the doctor ordered, and it's basically all any man could ever dream of. So now that you've figured out how to do this, I did go ahead and leave some other information on how to do uh, the, or the locations for the 10th icon for you to go and play around with. I will be doing a follow-up on how to go more in-depth and find some more of these complicated graphics or palettes that are really hard to find. So do stick around as the intensity ramps up just a little bit in the second graphics episode, but I appreciate all of you who stayed to the end and do send me some screenshots or something of all the wonderful backgrounds that you will have modified into the game. So thank you for sticking around and do be sure to leave this video a like if you want to see more to make sure that I know that you know we're in there. <laughs>